In this video I would like to explain my experiences with the Bumble Lab X1 Carbon when printing TPU. To be more precise, I'm using original TPU 95A HF filament from Bumble. In short, with the default settings in Bumble Studio, the print results on my X1 Carbon are absolutely unusable. At least today in January 2024 with Bumble Studio version 1.8.2.5. The good thing, I was able to solve the problem. It cost me hours of research and testing. The results are very good now, but on the other hand, the printing time increases significantly. If you are just interested in the solution, then jump straight to minute 720. If you have a few more minutes, here is the full story. In the past I have had access to a Zortrax M200. The printer is now almost 7 years old and is no longer quite up to date. However, it has performed reliably over the years. I am particularly interested in engineering components. This means that dimensional accuracy is very important to me. To be a little bit more precise, for components up to 10 cm I expect plus minus 3 tenths of accuracy. And I don't want to bother with the parameters in the slicer. So for my Zortrax M200, in the past I always bought Z Ultra filament, selected the standard configuration the slicer and off we went. Printing could easily take 12 hours or more, but in the end you had a solid result that met expectations. Sure, the surface wasn't a highlight and removing the raft was sometimes a bit tedious, but the part fit. Ok, in this video we don't want to talk about the ancient Zortrax drugs from 2015. Today it's about the Bumble Lab X1 Carbon. But I want to clarify what is important to me and why I was extremely frustrated when I got my new X1C a little over 2 weeks ago. So what do we have? Or rather, what did we have 2 weeks ago? Christmas. The anticipation this year was huge because my wonderful wife presented me with a 3D printer. Ok, I choose the printer by myself. I decided on the Bumble X1 Carbon. The reviews on the internet were above average, with people everywhere praising the incredible speed and high precision. Together with the printer I immediately ordered a few filaments, including a roll of TPU 95A HF, as I'm extremely interested in this flexible material. Since Bumble explicitly stated that the TPU filament should be tried before use, I also ordered a filament dryer in advance. My choice was the Sunlu filament dryer that can reach 70 degrees Celsius. Christmas Day! Here it is, my new X1 Carbon. What an awesome piece of technology. In the evening I put everything together, running through the initial configuration and doing all the updates. As I like to try out the TPU tomorrow, I put the new filament in the dryer and set it to 12 hours at 70 degrees. The next day I searched for a little project to test my new printer. Since there was not much time, I decided to create just a simple sleeve between two pipes. You're probably familiar with those drain pipes in the boiler room, where the siphon dries out after a while and then it starts to smell. I did a simple design in Fusion. Ok, the part is totally over-engineered but I wanted to test the printer's capabilities. I have the sleeve with an extra opening that water can be filled in if necessary. This should be printed out of basic PLA to see how fast the X1C's print head can raise around. Then there is a sealing ring and a stubble which should be printed out of TPU. When the sleeve started to print I couldn't believe my eyes how quickly the component was pulled up. A little bit of disillusionment set in when I took the part out of the printer and started measuring with the caliper for the first time. Unfortunately, instead of 49mm diameter, the cylinder was only 48.7. The old Zortrax would almost certainly have delivered between 48.8 and 49mm. I also used the support structure. Even at this point the surface wasn't really what I expected. Clear elevations are visible. And then there is the set seam, which is clearly visible. This is absolutely not a problem for the purpose of this component, but I had seen various prints of vases during my research and I was not aware of this fact. I wouldn't want to see such a profound set seam on a decorative object. Well, 
These are all things that you can probably get under control by optimizing the part itself and by tweaking the settings in the slicer. But I expected a better result out of the box due to the glorious reviews. Let's talk about the TPU which I loaded next to print the flexible parts. The filament was fed into the printer straight out of the dryer, which had already have had been running for almost 10 hours. Since the filament roll in the dryer runs on ball bearings, I thought this option is better than using the original holder on the back of the printer. I continued in Bamboo Studio, selected TPU 95AHF, sliced both parts with the standard 0.2mm profile and started the print. In the time lapse we see that something went wrong right at the beginning. The first layer did not stick properly and came off. The printer recognized the spaghetti and paused the printing process. Seems this feature works like a charm. Alright, I gave it another try. It worked. I removed the support from the stumble and checked the surface. To be honest, I expected more here too. But I did not really have a comparison either. Then I had a look at the ceiling ring. In a nutshell, it was just garbage. The surface was ugly and had strings. And what happened here and here? I thought I did something wrong. Maybe I used the slicer incorrectly or simply selected the wrong filament in Bumble Studio. After checking the settings several times, I was not able to find anything wrong. So I started playing around with the parameters and printed the ceiling ring a few more times. It was a nightmare, because nothing worked. I must have caught a faulty model. Therefore the next step was to create a support ticket to ask what is wrong here. The poor dimensional accuracy with PLA and the absolutely useless results with TPU. I had given up for the time being. I don't want to start researching on the internet and trying any solutions. I had a new printer that was praised by everyone, how great the results are and how easy it is to use. A few days have passed by and I've finally found a solution, at least for me. Look at this banshee, isn't it a nuisance? The path was rookie and took me many hours, lots of research and trying different suggestions. Some of them were unnecessary and I don't even want to mention them now. The solution for me was ultimately a print profile that I found on print tables. Before I will jump to the profile, there are two more things I also think are worth mentioning. Dry your TPU filament. I'm not sure which numbers are right. I initially dried my TPU 12 hours at 70 degrees in my filament dryer. And I also use it directly out of the dryer. When storing it, a vacuum bag along with silica gel bags are used. What I also did, as recommended, is set up my print bed mechanically. This is done with the three screws on the underside of the print bed. You need a special G-code file for this. I don't want to explain this in detail here. You can find all the information in the link that I added to the video description below. All I can say is that my printer fit well from the factory. I only made a small adjustment to one screw. Now about the print profile. I'm an absolute beginner when it comes to all these parameters. But essentially the speed has been reduced, which of course has a negative effect on the printing time, so printing takes longer. And then the settings for the filament itself have been changed. This parameter, the maximum volume velocity, is likely to be important here. Let's take a look at the estimated required times of the different profiles in comparison. For me the longer printing time is absolutely no problem. The results are worlds better. For example, if you put these two parts next to each other, you can hardly believe that they come from the same printer. 
it's not just the general appearance. For example, we always see a bulge on the edges that has completely disappeared here on the second part. The dimensional accuracy is also much better. Here is one of my latest prints. It's a puzzle game where PLA and TPU are used. As you can see here, these roads with 5mm diameter and the notches really fit perfectly. This is what I have expected. And I'm super happy now with my X1 carbon. I just don't understand what kind of print profile Bamboo has stored here for TPU. Okay, it's fast, but that's it. However, I hope this video helps you. Let me know about your experiences. Did you have similar problems or is there maybe a better way to get good results but with faster print speed? I appreciate any constructive feedback and of course I would be happy about the thumb. In this sense, have fun grafting and see you next time.